Howdy all you delicious people in here today to view Fractured from 2007. So, I think the first time around for this movie, um, you can really go on and enjoy and be godsmacked by how this eventually plays out. But then, eventually, once you go on and you've watched it more than once, you would probably just be honestly just excited uh for the way this movie just kind of turns you just be like yeah like this feels good to have this kind of thing just kind of blow up in someone's face at some point and to me this movie of course reminds me of law abiding citizen uh with gerard butler where it seems that gerard butler's character is to go into prison and then all of a sudden uh, we, of course, have Gerard Butler, who's going on like, yeah, I think you're going to have to go on and be pretty busy soon. So you should probably cancel all your appointments because I got I got things to, to tell you and I got things to say. So uh, I love that kind of turnaround where it's all of a sudden uh, like the villain is to eventually be the character that you're oddly uh, rooting for because it's kind of a. A switch a turn but anyways so with that said what is this story about so we go on to the very beginning of this film and we have Ted who is to kind of be this think tank kind of guy who's kind of smarter than everyone else in the room does need to go on and eventually uh, see a number of tests being run to know that he will be right Ted goes on to uh, eventually uh, drive off from his work to then turn around and make his way to find out that his wife is having an affair on him. Ted then goes on to go home, wait for his wife, and Ted is to then go on and kill his wife and is to then go on or get arrested for this go to trial and all of a sudden that's when things seem to not go so normal and eventually leads ryan gosling's character who was willie beecham go from a uh possible another job like uh like he's on cloud nine everything's coming up Beecham to all of a sudden Beecham is to almost lose everything and it's like well I guess I can just kind of go on and start over and start from scratch and like it won't be so bad <laughs> yeah um Beecham ends up going on and uh there may be brighter days ahead by the end of this film but, man, uh, this guy really uh, goes from the top uh, to eventually just spiraling down uncontrollably. Uh, so with that said, yeah, like it's a very it's a very interesting film. I would recommend eventually someone going on checking it out if you can conveniently uh, be able to rent this film uh, or go on and find a number of apps that I've used over time. To hopefully be able to watch this movie for absolutely free. So first off I gotta say that there are certain apps that do have uh, in the Google Play Store to the current second it's recording. There are certain apps that have like the exact same kind of format of what any apps that I'm going to recommend here. So at some point there might actually be a Google Play Store that might have a format like Yes Movies or uh, Fox HD Films or Fox HD Movies or TV Crush. It's just you gotta go through and kind of eventually find them at some point and event and go on and, and watch a movie for free. So, with that said, the first movie I would go on and recommend people uh, or the first app to go on and recommend uh, people to go into is C Movies app. This uh, 
this app, of course, you can go on and see a number of premium access stuff. A lot of stuff for absolutely free. Second off would be Fox HD Movies. Uh, that app, of course, you can go on and uh, be able to see almost everything for free. And the title of the app will be different than the actual logo. The logo will say Fox HD Movies, but the title will say something like Play 1080p HD Movies. So go ahead and check that out. Hopefully you can go and find those. Then thirdly, you can probably hopefully go onto a Google Play Store and search the words 1, 2, 3 movies. If that doesn't exist, you can go on to a Google search and search the words TV Crush. That will lead you to eventually find an app that says HD Movies 1, 2, 3 movies. And hopefully you can go on and uh, download that app. Be able to see that the logo says HD Movies. The King Crown off the side. Go ahead and download that. So, with that said, let's go on into that double five time territory because I think it's about that time yet again to go into spoiler time. Spoiler time, it's about the time you get to spoil f these uh, scenes from this movie. <laughs> God, I really have to just um, carve away what I'm trying to say here because, man, um, just very, uh, very long stretches uh, for what's going on recently so hopefully uh things end up tweaking or, or changing so in the very beginning of this movie we have ted crawford who is anthony hopkins who is to be in his office just kind of eventually playing with this uh this kind of i would call it gravity maze but i think it's just kind of uh, it's some kind of contraption and some kind of weird goofy like you put this uh, metal ball in to this thing that is to go on and uh, start uh, making its way round and round and round till it eventually stops and then goes up into this uh, way of re-delivering this whole thing so that we kind of continues to just uh, be this kind of consistent way about going about this so ted is all of a sudden have his having his assistant tell him that these guys are here to talk about this bulkhead situation and so ted is to go on and slap this thing correcting these guys uh for this plane that I guess had malfunctioned and so the guys were asking Ted it's like well hey do you need uh, results from this test do you need me to like eventually have you wait here to make sure that this works well and Ted's like absolutely not like I know it's going to work and so he drives off Ted then makes his way to this certain hotel where it seems that Mrs. Smith, who is actually Jennifer Crawford, is to be having an affair with Lieutenant Rob Noonally, who, of course, doesn't want this affair to end. Rob uh, is to go on and want to sleep next to Jennifer, and Jennifer will not allow something like this to happen. So, but Rob is going and say that this was not just some affair, it was real to him, and he didn't go on and ask Jennifer this, but I'm sure it's probably real to her too. So, we have Ted that is to make it to this hotel, and is to see his wife having an affair, and so... He, I guess, had even gone on to the lengths of getting this key card for both Jennifer and Rob's room. And so he goes in there and then he leaves. So Ted then goes on to make his way home uh, to then have Jennifer meet him there. And Ted goes on to eventually talk to Jennifer about his feelings. 
and eventually it seems that Jennifer is just disinterested. So after it seems that Jennifer is to kind of blow Ted off, we then have Ted who ends up blowing off Jennifer in the way of shooting her with this gun. Having her fall over and she's not 100% dead yet. But it seems that from this injury, she's going to go into a coma. So, we have the police being called and Lieutenant Rob uh, Nunnally is to be the officer that is going to go on and take this case. So, reminding, reminding everyone here that Rob Nunnally does not know that Ted is Jennifer's wife or even that uh, Jennifer is to have the name of Jennifer because all just Mr. and Mrs. Smith and is all cloak and dagger and so eventually we have Rob coming into this place after Ted is to go on and fire multiple bullets in to the uh, this glass where it alerts the gardener to like, okay, well, I'm going to call the police. So Ted is to go on and say to Rob, excuse me, that they should probably put their guns down, and so eventually they do. We have Ted who goes on and tells Rob exactly where his wife's body is, and Rob goes on to eventually check on uh, this woman's body, and he realizes, oh my god, this is Jennifer. Rob starts to go wild, and when we, of course, have Ted who comes in there with this gun, telling Rob that, hey, like, maybe you should check her pulse, but I think the best way to actually check her pulse is to kind of lift up her skirt, and there would be a way to showcase um, her pulse there. So, Rob goes on to knock the gun out of Ted's hand to then go on and eventually have him starting to wrestle with Ted. So they go on to arrest Ted and we have Rob who is telling this other detective who is Detective Flores that he wants to be there the whole time. He want to make sure that this guy ends up getting put away. So we have Ted getting arrested and getting uh, put into jail and is going to get his sentence. So we have Willie. We have Willie Beecham, who it seems that this is to be a lawyer that's on his way out of the uh, kind of work that he's in. So Beecham is to make his way into the office and we have Willie who is to go on and get certain calls from prior clients that Willie had of course gone on and transferred his workload to someone else to avoid the the obvious loss. So Beecham of course goes on to eventually be told by uh, an assistant I believe her name is Mona, that uh, she, of course, has, uh, has to have Willie go on and see God, who is actually to be their boss. So, we go on to of course have Willie who meets up with uh, DA Joe and 
so Joe was going on and mentioning about Willie and him kind of shifting off his cases, his workload. And Willie's like, well, yeah, because I, uh, like, I don't like to lose. And also, like, for every case that I give to someone else, I take more on. And so DA Joe is like, well, okay, all right. Like, so... Willie, of course, is mentioning that after Joe was to try to convince him to stay there, Willie wants to go on and just get a better job. And so DA Joe is like, oh, okay, all right, well, like, it'll be tough to replace you, but we'll replace you. So Willie goes to need to get a tuxedo. Uh, because, of course, we have one of the uh, people within here that uh, is to let Willie know he's going to need a tux. So, and that he's going to have to have, like, a style of tux also. And supposedly he just kind of goes for the classic look. So, Willie goes on to be told... Uh, by Norman Foster that he needs to go on and take this case. It'll be an easy win uh, because, of course, Willie is to realize that there is a smoking gun and a confession. And Willie's like, okay, that seems open and shut enough for me. So Willie's like, okay, I'll go on and I'll take this case. So he ends up, of course, doing the, the first early part of this before they actually get to trial. So... We have Ted who is going on and refusing to have a lawyer present. He's going to represent himself in this case, probably because he doesn't want to go on and play lawyer fees, which he won't have to. And plus, also, we don't want Ted to go on and have to like be bickering with his lawyer. So, Ted is to have a plea of not guilty. And we also have Ted saying that he's going to represent himself and tries to get rid of his lawyer and tells him that he no longer works with him. So Willie is to try to convince Ted to get can get counsel and Ted is to go on and be like, no, I'm, I'm not going to go on and, and take this. So... Ted is to want to figure out a way to make this easier on Willie, who is to mention that he may no longer have his position soon. And Ted is to go on and tell this, this judge that maybe there's a possibility that Ted can use his rights to try to get a speedy trial to go on and help Willie like remain on this case. And Willie is to agree to that. And so eventually this case is uh, seemingly to move on to a trial. So we have Willie that goes on to this party and is to meet with Nikki Gardner, who it seems that Willie continues to be eyeing, continues to look at her. So... Nikki is to go on and tell Ted uh, what she is uh, to want to see in Willie in the future, what she's expecting, uh, what she's going to do, show him the ropes, so on and so forth. So eventually this leads to both Willie and Nikki kind of um, being very close with one another to the point of both Willie and Nikki, like, this starts to get undeniable to where Nikki is to tell Willie, it's like, well, hey, like, how about after you leave this party, how about you go and you see me again? So, Willie and Nikki go on to be together, and Nikki is telling Willie about this Thanksgiving Day party, or Thanksgiving dinner party. Ugh. And so Willie is to agree 
to go to this Thanksgiving dinner because he doesn't have any family. So Willie goes on and is to is to go to this location and so we kind of have the family bickering back and forth about Willie going to the dark side and so on and so forth. Uh, and so we of course have Judge Gardner who is uh, to be uh, talking about the the way of uh, like I love the line where he goes on and talks about like um, putting the stake through the bad guy's heart and that certain people like desperately want that feeling of just like themselves taking down a bad guy but anyways so we have Willie that goes on into a case that Nikki thought that the whole case was like quickly wrapped up and done with and Willie is like no I'm gonna stay on the case to kind of see this through and Nikki's like well wait a minute like like, I thought that you were done. I went out on the limb uh, for my boss and, and said that you were done with that case. And Willie's like, well, no. Like, I'm still, like, on this case. And Nikki's like, seriously, your boss doesn't want to do damage control? And Willie's like, no, I want to I want to continue this case. Because what ends up happening at first is we have Willie that talks to Detective Flores... And Flores ends up saying that the gun doesn't work. And Willie's like, what do you mean the gun doesn't work? And so the detective goes on and mentions that, uh, that Ted doesn't have any, like, gunpowder residue on his body. There's no blood from his wife on his body. And so, like, there's no way to trace this gun to Ted. And also, the gun that supposedly Ted has was never fired. So, Willie's like, well, then there has to be a gun in that home somewhere. He must have just stashed it somewhere. We just need to go through this entire house and figure out where the gun is. Because, of course, the gun didn't get little gun feet. And then walk away. So that's the first thing that happens. Then we turn around and start having Willie, who is to have all these uh, have all these people coming up to the stand, uh, confirming that Ted may have been the killer from the sounds that they heard, or to eventually have certain statements that eventually Ted is not going to defend against. So, we further go into this story to have Rob uh, Nunnally going on and telling his story about what had happened. And Ted finally goes on and does something lawyer-like and objects. And so they're like, well, what are you objecting uh, to? And so Ted is like, well, I don't really know exactly the terms. And they're like, okay, we'll try to explain it in layman's terms. So Ted is going and object to Rob going on and saying anything um, and to be held accountable because Ted had known that Rob was having an affair with his wife and that blows this whole case what up like open to have supposedly Rob being involved in of course Ted making the statement going on and having consistently Rob being there could affect Ted's emotional state and get him to confess to something that isn't actually true and so on and so forth. So we have everything all thrown out. The confession, 
everything everything is now all like null and void. So Willie's to start to realize that he has zero evidence against Ted at this point, and this just blows up in his face to the point of him wanting to possibly like, yeah, I don't know if I should like I should probably just sneak out or not. And so DA Joe is to go and say to Willie, it's like, well, hey, like we can go on and do like damage control for what you did. We can go and clean up your mess. And Willie is to go on and definitely not want to let anybody else go and take this case. Because Ted was to go on and talk to Willie about these cracked eggshells. And how eventually when Ted would have to go into this barn and uh, see if there was any eggs that were defective. Ted put so many defective eggs into this bucket and the person was kind of upset that this guy had put in so many but Ted could find so many flaws with this bucket or with the with the the eggs that were shoved in the bucket so there's a reasonable reason for all of them being put in there because there's always a weak spot and so Ted is to realize that Willie has a weak spot and his weak spot is that he likes to win. And so Ted is going to use that against Willie. So well, we also have a minute here where Willie is uh, to not really come very prepared for this case. He thought it was like open and shut so he didn't think he'd have to do any legwork for this one. So, Willie is to start to realize that the only thing that he can possibly have to save his case is a person that is in a coma right now, who of course is Jennifer. So, Willie is to start to go on and read to this girl and read this poem from this book, and we eventually have Willie going on and start to realize that Jennifer may not recover in time to give Willie enough evidence. So we also had a moment where Willie was to make, uh, was to give Nikki the story about how he was to go on and try to basically uh, catch this lawyer off guard and throw this case. And so there was a bet that if Willie could throw this case, that Willie would go on and get in uh, a call from this uh from this person to kind of set up this job interview. Willie goes on and catches the loyal, lawyer unprepared that he's against, throws the case, and eventually gets his phone call to interview for this job. So, but Willie goes on to realize that he may no longer have a job by the end of all this. So, What ends up happening is Willie is to go on to find that Rob had gone on to warn Willie to be prepared for this case because, like, this guy is crazy. This guy is, like, this guy is going to eventually be too smart for Willie. And Willie's like, well, I got a confession, I got this, and at that time he did. And so, we now have Rob that is coming to Willie to want to plant a gun now on Ted so they so they can find this gun and put Ted away because they know that this guy did it. They just have to go on and finally have proof in court that he did. So... 
Rob is to say that he knows somebody in evidence that can kind of switch things around and have things match. And so Willie is to possibly within his courtroom have this phone call that is determined whether or not Willie has this evidence. So Willie is telling his assistant to kind of wait uh, by the court office or by the, the courtroom and call him within court. So Willie at first uh, is pushed by Ted to dismiss all these charges because there's no real evidence against Ted here besides just certain accusations from people. That's not enough. It's not a real eyewitness here. So Willie is to be tempted to have this phone call, but he decides to no longer take it. And so they end up releasing Ted on all charges. There's nothing they could do. So Willie goes on to realize that he had lost here. And when he uh, gets uh, the phone call from his uh, assistant going like, hey, what happened? And so kind of Willie convinces the girl like, hey, don't worry about it. So, because he ends up tell he ended up telling her it's like, well, yeah, like I have to go on, and like I'm not sure whether or not like I am going to find this evidence for this case, but like we'll we'll see how that plays out. So, Willie doesn't go on and and do what he said, so that ends up getting Ted released. So. Now that, of course, Ted is released and Willie is still going on to Jennifer's room, hospital room, and reading to her and so on and so forth and spending time, we have Ted who goes on to Willie and is to say, it's like, well, hey, like, like, uh, like, it seems unusual that you're here, but whatever. So, Ted is to have also told Willie to cancel these flight plans um, for Ted and Jennifer going uh, on a vacation together because, of course, uh, Jennifer is to no longer be able to take this trip. So, Ted is to be out and so we have Willie who is to try to think how he can still beat Ted and so Ted is to go on and say that he is going to pull the plug soon and Willie better pray that somehow or another Jennifer wakes up and is coherent so We have Willie rushing to get this court order to prevent Ted from going on and pulling the plug, but Ted does so anyways, and Jennifer dies. So, we now have Willie, who is to lose his job with Nikki, um, because of course there is at one point where Willie is trying to get this court order and talks to Nikki about it, and Nikki is to go on and like, well, hey, like, how is that going to go on and help anything? And Willie realizes that he can no longer turn to Nikki. And so he walks away from that. We have D.A. Joe, who seems to still want to help Willie no matter what happens. And so we have Willie who goes on to find Judge Gardner, the guy from before about the whole stake the heart thing. And we, of course, have Willie who has this judge sign uh, this paperwork trying to prevent Ted from pulling the plug. So Ted pulls the plug, Jennifer dies, and so now we have Willie who is to seemingly be out of all of his jobs. And so now Willie is just kind of packing up all his things at his place to eventually move on somewhere. 
DA Joe is talk to Willie and just be like, well, you know what? Like, I, I want to keep you on. Like, I want to keep you working. And Willie's like, I don't know. I think I'm going to move on. I think I need to change the pace, so on and so forth. That kind of, that kind of dialogue. So, Willie goes on to further just kind of look at the records of uh, the whole arrest and is to continue to look at things, is to look at things um, and try to figure out, like, okay, like, because D.A. Joe is to mention that Ted, of course, was to have been charged with attempted murder, but now, technically, with Jennifer being dead now, the charge is now changed from attempted to murder if if Willie can come up with some way to figure out this whole case. So Willie's going on and talking to Detective Flores and what ends up happening is both of them have the same phone and they end up accidentally picking up the wrong one. So we start to realize here that we have Willie realizing that, oh my God, like, if you go on, you have the exact same gun. You can go on and accidentally swap them and not even realize it. Plus, Willie is to mention how the gun of Ted's and the gun of Rob's are identical in every way. So... We have Willie that is to figure out about the whole gun switching thing and that it also is to have Jennifer have this bullet in her brain that now can be taken out to match the bullets on the on a certain gun specifically. And so Willie's to go on and figure out this case and is to go and meet up with Ted and have this gun on him. And so Ted is mentioning that he's going to go on this vacation uh, without Jennifer. And that he's almost soon to go. And so Willie is to go on and figure out about the whole gun switching thing. And so eventually it seems more and more that Willie is going to convict Ted of murder. So... We turn around and have Willie go on and arrest Ted here, and now he's arrested for murder. And this time around, the the charges are going to stick. The last thing that we end up seeing in this film is that Willie is kind of adjusting uh, his tie to tell Ted to do the same. And so Ted does so, and he's like, oh, okay, great. Because, of course... Ted was to tell Willie in the beginning of this to kind of adjust his bow tie, and Willie did do that after he mentioned it. So, that's technically the way that this movie ends, uh, to where, of course, Willie is to figure it out, and I kind of uh, didn't have to go, didn't want to go and re explain all of that, but uh, we come to find out that Ted was to have grabbed Rob's gun at that hotel that they were at. We also had Willie who had camera footage of the hotel but could not go on and through the footage legitimately see that it was Ted and we even have Detective Flores who was consistently saying that they can go on and ad enhance the camera or the photo and Willie's like, dude, I don't have time for that. I don't have time to go on and try to like like hold off this whole court case to advance a photo and plus also even probably that wouldn't be convincing enough so after we have Ted who was to get out of this whole case scot free we have Rob who is to shoot himself and die at this courthouse and we had Ted who was to tell Willie that both of these characters had died with the same bullet, which means like they had died via the same gun. 
instead of the same bullet. And that Ted is to revel in that. So with that said, that's kind of how the movie just kind of finishes up for me um, in the way of which of me explaining it and so on and so forth. So I think I'm going to go on and try to get out of here. Thank you for going on and listening to me, especially with uh, me being as tired as I am and even yawning during this video, I apologize. Um, but I've had, I had some long days, uh, the day before, um, so, or long day the day before. So I'm just kind of recovering from that. Um, so with that said, I'm going to go on and call this one a day. So goodbye everybody. Goodbye everybody. Let me know in the comments below if there's something that I forgot about. It's probably a little bit of a detail thing or whatever. But I know I probably had missed uh, something within this movie. Let me know how you felt about Fractured because I like this movie. Um, after you go on and you watched it consistently, it may, of course, lose value because you can only know so many times. Like, okay, uh, Anthony Hopkins' character is eventually going to get out of this. And what else happens toward the end? Uh, the end of this movie? Oh, we have... Uh, Willie, who goes on and eventually figures out a way uh, to arrest Ted again. We also had the moment where uh, Ted was to ask Willie, it's like, well, hey, you don't mind if I call you Willie, right? And we go on, we have them kind of break down the whole Willie thing and how it, it sounds funny. Um, but yeah. Other than that, I think all of this is covered. Let me know in the comments below. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.